Lord, our coming day and night, Lord, shall not be in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, Daddy, Lord, help us to be doers of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, make us the doers of your word, Lord. Make us doers of your word. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to live for you. Help us to live our life for you. Lord, we ask that tonight, oh Lord, cause us, oh Lord, to walk, oh Lord, in your way, so Lord. Help us, oh Lord, all mine to live ready, live right, and live rapturable in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. I pray for every brethren online, oh Lord, I will be joining that in. That this word, O oh Lord, will not be against us in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord Almighty. Don't let this word be against us, Lord. Father, don't let this word be against us, O Lord. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and as many that will still join us, Lord Almighty. Father, you make us the doers of your word. Lord Almighty, all that we have been learning from the parable of Jesus. All that we have been learning from you, Master Jesus, Lord, we pray. Now begin to practice them, oh Lord. Make us the doers of this word, Daddy. Lord Almighty, make us the doers of this word, Daddy. Heavenly Father, Lord Almighty, <laughs> the grace, O oh Lord, to live ready. Lord Almighty, grant us in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, the grace to live ready. Lord Almighty, grant us in the mighty name of Jesus, the grace to live ready, live rapturable. O oh Lord Almighty, Father, grant us that. Lord Almighty, the grace to live righteous, a righteous life, live ready and live rapturable. Lord Almighty, grant us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, help us. Father, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Lord, help us, Daddy. Daddy, we will not be cast away at the end, oh Lord. Father, Lord, help us not to be cast away at the end in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Father, help us not to be cast away at the end in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Hell is not a good place for any human being. Lord, I pray for everyone under this teaching tonight, oh Lord, we will not miss eternity with Jesus. Amen. Lord Almighty, Daddy, <laughs> we ask for that grace to remain steadfast, oh Lord, Amen. faithful to the end, Amen. oh Lord. Lord, we receive that grace Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Daddy, Lord, the voice I know you not will not be, you will not hear it at the end in Jesus' Amen. name. Father, Lord Almighty, help us, Daddy. Amen. We bless your name. We worship Amen. you. We honor you, Daddy. Amen. Lord, because you are our God, there is Amen. none like you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You, In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Can you just pray for us as we are starting right Hallelujah. now? Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, yes. Father, Lord. in Jesus' name. Amen. King of glory, Lord of lords, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for making it possible for us again to gather this week. Yes, Lord. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for caring for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love, Lord. Mm. Thank, thank you for you, salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank 
thank you for this Bible study, mm, Lord, for thank you, wanting Father. to know more about you. Yes, Lord. Father, we pray that your word will have a place in our hearts today in Jesus' Amen, name. Amen, Lord. We come against every spirit mm. that we want to snatch your word off our hearts, Lord, Amen. and we cast them into the bottomless pit in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, Lord God Almighty, we want to reign with you. Yes, Lord. The purpose of learning more about you is to be able to walk the way that we will be able to reign with you in eternity. Amen. Father, we pray, Lord God Almighty, for the understanding of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, Father, Lord, we need a hearing ear and a doing heart. Yes. For what does it profit a man if he mm. gains the whole world and loses his soul, Lord? Mm. Father, we don't want to lose our soul. Yes, Father, we pray, Father, Lord, that you grant us understanding Amen. and you help us to live by this word. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. Thank you, Jesus. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to welcome every one of us, those of us in the room, the Zoom room. Uh, if you are on um, the Facebook, welcome to tonight's Bible study. And I want to believe that God will speak to our hearts. Amen. The word that will come for tonight will be a convincing one Amen. and convince one. Amen. Now our lives will not remain the same. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, before we go on, and uh, I, I want us to just take this song uh, um, and just to worship the Lord. Hmm. Just to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is our God. There is none like Him. Glory to God. We are this God from the beginning to the end. And amen. Hallelujah. And I want us to. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself.
Father, you are God all by yourself. There is none like you. You are wonderful, Father. Thank you because you are ever God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you are the God of our life. Thank you, Jesus. You are the God of faith and grace, church. Thank you, Jesus. You are the God of everyone hearing the sound of my voice. Father, we say tonight, you are our God. We know you will not allow us to perish. Amen. Now that we pray, everything we need not to perish at the end. Lord, grant us in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray, oh Lord, this world will transform our lives. Amen. We heal us. Amen. And make us fit and ready for your coming. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. I want to Amen. welcome every one of you. Welcome, ma. Good evening. Good evening, ma. Thanks so much. I know you really, like, you struggled so much to enter. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> We thank God. We thank God. Thank God for his blessings. We thank God. So tonight we continue with our study on the parable of Jesus. And interestingly, we are coming to the end of it gradually. We have about maybe about two more to go. And um, by the grace of God, we'll be looking at the parable of the sheep and goats. The parable of the sheep and goats. Very interesting. Last week, we looked at the parable of the 10 virgins. And the lesson we took home from that one, simply be ready. The, 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 the lesson is very direct, very easy to understand. Just live ready for the coming of the bridegroom. You know, the five fully virgins were not living ready. They went to the party, but they are not, they didn't live, they are not they are ready not for, the, for the main event of the party. They just, they all went. But the wise one actually prepared for the party and even after the party. I, 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 think, I think the point is this. They were all prepared for the party, but the wise one prepared even for after the party. Because after the party, they have to go with the bridegroom and the bride to the house of the uh, bridegroom. So the foolish virgin only prepared for the form fear, but they didn't prepare how to live after the form fear. May our life not be like that. Amen. So the lesson is we must be ready and the price for failing to be ready is too high. It's too high. It's eternal damnation if we fail to, to, to live ready. So my prayer is that God will give us the grace to live a righteous life, Amen. live ready, Amen. and also live rapturable in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So it's, Amen. It is a warning addressed specifically to those inside the professing church who are not to assume that their future is unconditionally assured. In other words, many Christians are in church. They believe that, okay, they have given their life to Christ. That's it. Giving our life to Christ is just the beginning. Living our life for Christ is the hint thing. Many people have given their life to Christ but they are still not living their life for Christ. So that's a, you can see, because like the foolish virgins, they were not living their life for the bridegroom. They were not really prepared to go with the bride to, to the bridegroom place. May we, not, may, may, I mean, may we not be like the foolish virgin in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so the, the parable of the sheep and goats can be found in the uh, book of Matthew, chapter 25. By now, Jesus Christ is, is rounding up this part of the Oliver discourse. This is part of the last discussion he had with his disciples and the multitude too. It's at the set of the last parables and discussion he had, just telling them to live ready. 
telling them about the judgment that is, that is to come. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we now, um, please can you read for us? Uh, Hallelujah. Amen. From, Matthew we are reading from 25 verses 31 to 46. Amen. Let's try and open our Bible. Yeah. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, yeah. And all the angels with him, mm -hmm. then he will sit upon his glorious throne. Mm -hmm. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, yeah. and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Mm -hmm. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Wow. Then the king will say to those on his right, mm -hmm. Come. You who are blessed by my father, mm -hmm. inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. Mm -hmm. for, I am, for I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. Mm -hmm. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Hmm. Then the righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and fed you or thirsty and gave you something to drink or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? Hmm. And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters, you were doing mm -hmm. it to me. Mm. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, away with you, you cursed once into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. Mm. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refused to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. Mm. And they will go away into eternal punishment, mm -hmm. but the righteous will go into eternal life. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You know, this parable uh, is so clear that, I mean, it is self explanatory, but there are some lessons that we need to take on, that we need to run with. In fact, it must change us. It must change our, our attitude to, to life. If we really, if we really want to make heaven, if we really want to make heaven. The Bible says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goat. First of all, we need to understand this context and where, when. Is this a final judgment or is it not? We need to get that. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you look at this, they, I mean, what Christ is trying to show here, the Son of Man, we all know, is Jesus Christ himself. And when he comes in his glory, that is, when, it's come, when he comes back again, this is referring to the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is actually referring to the second coming. He said, when Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. This event will take place here on earth. Amen. Amen. This is not a final judgment. This is the event that will take place immediately after the tribulation. By this time, before the rapture, before the tribulation, the church will have been raptured. But during the time of tribulation, 
it's a seven years period. Then, I mean, after the seven years, that is what Christ is coming to do and start his millennial reign. This event talks about before the beginning or the, this is the beginning of the millennial reign. There will be a judgment called the judgment of nations that will take place here on planet Earth. So uh, as we're going, you are free to ask questions so that uh, we, I don't want us to miss any part of this uh, discussion this evening because it's very, very important. The purpose of we coming to the Zoom is to be able to share and ask questions and also interact and, you know, looking at our outline, Jesus begins this part by saying it concerns his return in glory to set up his kingdom here on earth. Therefore, the setting of this event is at the beginning of the millennium after the tribulation. As I've said, the tribulation is a seven year period. We have the first three and the half years is called the tribulation and the last three and the half years is called the great tribulation time. That's another, I mean, topic, topic another series on itself, which you can actually do more in the book of Revelation and in the book of Daniel, you know. So this is the judgment of the nations. This nation, this, this, I mean, and it's distinct from the final judgment for several reasons. So I want us to take note of that. This is not the final judgment because it happens at a different time from the final judgment. The final judgment, all the great white throne judgment, which we read in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, 11 to 15, you know, it clearly happens after 1,000 year reign of Jesus Christ and his saints. The final judgment happens after the millennial reign. The judgment of the nations takes place before uh, the beginning of the millennial reign, after uh, tribulation time. Amen. Let's look at the white throne judgment in Revelation 20, 11 to 15. Let's look at it so that you can see the difference here. Revelation 20. 11 to 15. Yeah. And I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it, the earth and the sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne and the books were opened, including the book of life and the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead and the death and death and the grave gave up their dead, and all were judged according to their deeds. Verse 14. Mm. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. And anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Amen. This is the final judgment. And it's actually the judgment of the dead, of death and, and, and hell itself. Because the final judgment, hell itself is going to be judged. They thrown into the lake of fire, which is the second death. Amen. So but the, the, this, this judgment of nations is like the judgment for the living, those who are alive, that are able to live after the tribulation here on earth. Now let's go on. So I want us to take note of that. Uh, my prayer is that none of us will be part of this judgment of nations. Amen. Because for you to be part of the judgment of the nations, you will have gone through the tribulations. Yeah. And the tribulation and the great tribulation time is a bad time. And I don't pray that any one of us will still be here in the time of tribulation. Amen. You know, so those who survive tribulation are the people that will be judged. Amen. 
So let's go on with our, uh, so the judgment of nations in Matthew 25 happened immediately after the glorious return of Jesus Christ. It happens, and now it happens at a different, that is the judgment of nation happens at a different time from that of the uh, great white throne judgment. The great white throne judgment of revelation happens in heaven. The judgment of the nation in Matthew that we are treating today happens here on earth. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is very clear. So now another point we want to show is that it happens onto different subjects. That is the, 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 the judgment of nation and the judgment of um, the great white throne judgment. There are they, they are after different subjects. The Great White Throne Judgment of Revelation 20 emphatically includes all unredeemed men and women. In fact, the final judgment, which is the White Throne Judgment, is the judgment for those people who are not redeemed. The dead that did not die in the Lord. You understand? So definitely they did not take part in the rapture of the saints. So the judgment of the nation in Matthew seems only to include the nations, that is, Gentiles who are judged in large measure on their kindness and care towards or in part the Jewish people. That is, when Christ says, my brethren, if you have done it to this, my brethren, he's actually talking to, he's talking about the Jews. And finally, these two judgment happens on a different basis, on a different basis. You know, the, 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 the judgment of the white throne, the white throne judgment is for the sinners. And this one, the judgment of the nation that will happen here, the basis for the judgment, you will discover that it's not because of their moral decadence or their sin or anything. But one thing, because of their indifference, they don't, they don't care about Jesus or about his people. You can see it. As we go on, we'll get we'll, we'll, we'll try and understand more. Now let's look the uh, see the, the picture of the goats and the sheep from verse um, 32. All the nation will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another. When Jesus Christ comes in his glory to come and start the millennial reign, he's going to start with the judgment of all the nations that are here on earth, the remaining. By now, the, 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 the population of the old earth will have depleted significantly. Maybe it will have dropped more than half of the, the population of the earth coming down to about maybe three billions or it will have dropped because during the tribulation time, over half of the population of the earth will perish, will surely be destroyed. You know, if you read the book of Revelation very well from chapter six onward, you will see how the judgment, how God will begin to judge during the times of tribulation. My prayer is that none of us will be part of it. Amen. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate one from another. You can see that Jesus Christ, when he's coming, today we see him as a, as a, as a lamb of the tribe uh, of Judah. They went, no, as a lamb. But when he comes, he's going to come as the lion of the tribe of Judah. When he comes, no nation will be able to stand against him. When all the nations gathered against him, when they see him, by the breath of his mouth, he's going to destroy them. That is the power in Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he will divide the nation into a sheep and go. That is, as a sheep, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Verse 33. And he will set the sheep on his right hand. But the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you 
from the foundation of the earth. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me a uh, drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. I was naked and your clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you and thirsty and give you drink? When did you see, when uh, did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothed you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, as surely I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Amen. Mm -hmm. That is, that, 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 that is, that calls for us to really ponder and ask ourselves. What, what can we say about, about this? Now, we are talking about judgment during tribulation. How can we, how can we correlate this? How can we bring this to our time now? How do you see the importance of the reason why God judged them right? Just for taking care of his people, for taking care of the poor, the needy, the less privileged and all that. What can you say about this judgment to start with? If you have any, if you have any, anything that really minister to you, I wanted to, I wanted to just um, signify. Let's 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 share it briefly. What can you say about this? Because it's really touching. I would say these are some of the things we don't even we don't even care about. These are the things we overlook. And we always want to do the big thing. But Christ was looking at those small things. What can you say about God's requirements in his judgment? Yeah. What can we say? Verse, um, if you have any, if you have any comment, please send it. Verse 41. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, depart from yes, me. Yes, ma'am. You wanted to say something? No. Okay. Verse 41. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, depart from me, you cast into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then you also will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you. Then he will answer them saying, as surely I say to you in as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment for the righteous into eternal life. Amen. 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 Now, let me ask a question, maybe just to uh, open up the discussion before we, we uh, is this thing applicable to us today or only to those that will be after the tribulation? It's applicable to us today. We all agree that it's applicable to us today. It's not only after tribulation. So in other words, do you think God will also use this criteria to judge, to judge people before the rapture? I want us to, as many of us that are online, uh, for those of us on um, YouTube, I'm sorry, on Facebook, you can raise your comment too. 
put your comment or your question there because it's very important. And now let's look at our outline. The goats and the sheep, all those on earth at that time will be brought before the Lord and he will separate them. The sheep are those who are saved during the tribulation. The goats are the unsaved who survived the tribulation. The sheep on Jesus' right hand are blessed by God the Father and given an inheritance. The goats on Jesus' left hand are cursed with eternal hell fire. Jesus said, ends the discourse with that contrast. They will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Now, so let, let, let's, let's look at this. It's the sheep are those who are saved during tribulation. How many of us would like to, to be, do, do, we, do we like to wait for this? You know, uh, as I said, I, I don't even pray that anyone hearing the sound of my voice to be part of this judgment we're talking about, because this is what they call second chance. Mm -hmm. If you miss a rapture, this is the only next opportunity you have. And by prayers that no one hearing the sound of my voice will miss the rapture. Amen. In the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. May God give us the grace to live ready, live righteous, Amen. walk in righteousness, in holiness, and make us rapturable. There's nothing Amen. as good as being part of the, the first flight. The second flight, anything can happen. In fact, the second flight, people pay with their blood. So we can see here that during, after the tribulation, those that are the sheep are those who are saved during the tribulation. You know, you, you know, some people may miss the rapture, maybe through their carelessness and trying to make up for it during the tribulation. But people will pay dearly for it, because a lot of air will owe. I mean, a lot of life will be lost. But in fact, the Antichrist will so much target the so-called believers that miss the rapture. That look, if they don't declare for Antichrist, the Antichrist will we 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 use their blood for it, you know. So the sheep are those ones that are saved, and as I've said, the goats are those that are saved. And now, looking at the sin committed by the goat, the charge against the lost one, you notice that it did not concern any obvious moral violation. But their problem was that their indifferent attitude towards Jesus and his people. It is not, Jesus Christ did not say, look, be on the side of the good because you fornicate or you commit adultery or because you stole or because you killed somebody. What was their offense? What was their reason for their condemnation? Okay. They're just not being caring, not concerned, be indifferent to Christ and his people. So in their indifference, sealed their doom the price of indifference is too high to say, yeah. I feel that the Bible verse is urging us to be sensitive to the need of, of to the needs around us. Yeah. Knowing that every man is made in God's image. Amen. Amen. So, I, 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 it's even more than issue of fear. It's, that is the reality. It continues. Yeah. Anything we do that personally affects man touches God's heart. Our service is our service to mankind, whether good or bad, will never go unrewarded. Sure. You know, as soon as we give our life to Christ, our good works count. Mm -hmm. and, and our, our bad works, our are bad works also count. Mm -hmm. You understand? But before we give our life to Christ, good work doesn't count because 
good work cannot save. You know, but once we are children of God, what touches the heart of God is how we treat other people. How we treat the people Christ has died for. How, how we treat the less privileged, the weak, the, I mean, the vulnerable, the, the widows, the, I mean, the poor, the homeless, the people with special, you know, disabilities. These are the people that touches the heart of God. And unfortunately, these are the areas people just, we just overlook. We don't even see it as part of our Christian obligation. I also want to add our uh, helps at home. Maybe because they are helpers, we just treat them anyhow. Yes, I, I, I mean, they, they form part of the less privileged. It is because they, they are less privileged. That's why they are, I mean, they become a housemaid and all that. Nobody will, when they are giving back to them, they did not pray that they will become housemaids. Nobody will give back to a child and say, look, as they are praying and dedicating that child, when you grow up, oh, you become the housemaid, you become, you know, no, no, nobody will ever. These are the people we need to be very careful in treating them with care because as we treat them, God is recording it for us or against us. This is very important. And that is what we can see in this area. So we can see that the price of indifference is too high to pay. We cannot afford to be indifferent towards Jesus and his return. Every one of us, we need to tighten up our belts and re-examine the way we have been treating the, the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's a serious matter. In fact, that is the most important thing that is remaining for us now. Yes, we, you want to get a house, you can get a house, you have a house, you have car, you have children, you have wife, you have husband, you have everything. Hey, this very one, it has no alternative. The coming of the bridegroom is very, very important. How you prepare for, and these are the ways we prepare for them. Whatever you are doing now, do it for the sake of Christ. Whatever we are doing or whatever we have to do for the rest of our life, in the rest of our, let us do it for the sake of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because this thing will be recorded for us, either good or bad. Amen. Amen. This is very important. Number two, we can't afford to be indifferent towards the Holy Spirit who makes us ready for the return of Jesus Christ. Many of us, we... We turn our deaf ears when the Holy Spirit is prompting us to do good works. You understand? We, we tend to turn our deaf ears to it. You know, we, there's no way you can live right in this dispensation without the prompting of the Holy Spirit. That is why the, 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 the life in the Spirit is not an option. It's the only, it's the only option we have to live right, because it's a spirit that is holy and it's the only one that can help us to live a holy life, amen. So mm -hmm. we must not be indifferent to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. In other words, we must, we must not harden our hearts towards the Holy Spirit. This is very, very important because the sin of this, the goats here is their indifference. Maybe when the Holy Spirit was prompting them, oh, see this one, see this poor one, this one needy, what are you doing? The Holy Spirit will have prompted, maybe they did not, you know? Just as we, in, I mean, many of us in this world, in this dispensation, we cannot afford to be indifferent towards the resources mm -hmm. that God gives us. Indifference, we must, know how to handle the resources God has given us. You know, we need to come to the, to, to the realization that everything God has given us, 
we are steward of it. We are going to give account on how, of how we how we make use of them, how we have used it to enhance his kingdom, how we have used it to enlarge and improve or you know, help his kingdom. Whatever we have in our hands, we we'll all give them. We are given. There is nothing we have that we do not receive from heaven. How you will know is God gave us these things to use them here on planet Earth, not to take them anywhere. Because if we are to take them when we are going, then um, <laughs> we will have seen a lot of trailer loads. You know, people will take along when they are going. But unfortunately, nobody takes anything, anything to that place. We can't afford to be indifferent towards the needy people all okay, around us. 22, mm. This is very, very important. We must not be indifferent towards the needy people all around us. Mm -hmm. We need to be very, very sensitive. What, what was the scene of the rich man in the story of the rich man and Lazarus? Can anyone tell me? What was the scene of that rich man? He did not care for Lazarus. That's just the point. That's the, the, the scene of that man is just is indifference. Mm. He, he has the power, he has the, the, the capacity to take care of Lazarus. He has the capacity to house him. He has the capacity to clothe him. He has the capacity to treat him, give him the first class medical attention. He has the capacity to, to turn his life around, but he did not care. Instead, he even allowed his own dog to lick the soul of Lazarus, in different life. In the, so a lot of people live their lives, they feel that nobody can, nobody can arrest me. I'm free, no, I can live my life. No, 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 no. We can see the, 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 the indifference, the price of indifference is too high to pay. Mm -hmm. And we can't afford to be indifferent towards lost humanity that will stand in judgment. In other words, we can't be indifferent to soul winning. We cannot say, oh, we are saved now. Well, uh, that one is a sinner. I can't talk to him. Ah, we must be ready to save. We must be ready to preach Christ to somebody. We must be ready to talk to somebody about Christ because this is very, very important. So the, the scene of of the good here is just indifference. They're just, they don't care about the poor. They don't care about Jesus's people. They just underlook them, oh no. They just see them as nobody. You must learn this very great lesson. And um, please, I want us to prepare to ask our questions. If you have any question, please. Uh, you can write the question on the, if you're on Facebook, you can write them. And then um, for those of us on Zoom, you can also ask the question. As I give us the last past, uh, paragraph, said the core message of the parable of sheep and goats is that God's people will love others. That is those whom God will say, their life will be characterized by their love for others. Mm -hmm. You can see that the sheep here, yeah, they show love for the needy, yeah. for the poor, the care, the care. This is very, you know, good works will result, you know, from our relationship to the shepherd. Followers of Christ will treat others with kindness, serving them as if they were serving Christ himself. This, uh, I mean, if we don't have, you know, that, that fruit of the spirit in us, Talking about kindness, that's just, I mean, we, then something is wrong because when we give our life to Christ, God poured his spirit in us such that we have love, we have joy, we have peace, we have long suffering. That is, we have, we are, we are patient people, we are kind people, we are godly in our dealings, we have self-control. So all this, we characterize our life. So 
it will, I mean, help us to be able to see the needy and be able to attend to it, to be able to attend to the poor, attend to the widow, attend to the less privileged. This is very, very important. And my prayer is that God Almighty will help us in our journey. Now let's yeah, right. let's let's take some questions. Let's what what can you what, what can you say about this? Um, you have any question, man? Do you have any contribution? No. About this, mm -hmm. Amen. So what can what what can you say, man? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What can we say about people who particularly prefer to help those that can reward them? Yeah. Are they yeah. doing it unto Christ? And then is it part of what Christ is saying we should do? It definitely is. Um, whatever we do, we must do as unto the Lord. You yes. know, mm -hmm. trying to trying to uh, give to people who will, I mean, in return, do the, the same thing to us. We have not have actually done anything. This because the only the only thing that you can do when you give to the people who do not have capacity to give back, you are actually giving to God. You, the only one who can repay you or reward you is in. So it is more rewarding for you to give to those who cannot even pay you back. These are the people, you know, Christ, Christ was um, teaching the people that look, when you organize a party, for example, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's turn to the book of Luke, Gospel of Luke, Let's look at Gospel of Luke chapter 14 from verse 12. 14, 12. Yes. Then he turned to his hosts. Mm. When you put on a luncheon or a banquet, mm. he said, don't invite your friends, mm. brothers, relatives, mm. and rich neighbors, mm -hmm. for they will invite you back, mm -hmm. and that will be your only reward. You see? Instead, mm -hmm. invite the poor, the, the crippled, poor. the lame, and mm. the blind. Mm. Then at the resurrection of the righteous, God will reward you for inviting those who could not repay you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So you can see that. It's more that there's greater reward in treating people who cannot pay you back. There's a question. Yes. Yeah. Should we Christians be bothered about those who are falsely taking advantage of our charitable deeds? Uh -huh. Should we Christians be mm. bothered about those who are falsely taking advantage? Of our charitable deeds. Yeah, if, if I may get that question right, right, maybe she's trying to ask. You know, some people take advantage of you because mm -hmm. when you, they, they kind of explore you because mm -hmm. maybe they they know you are generous, you are kind. So, so should we be so, bothered about it? Uh, that uh, 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 that is why the Holy Spirit is the one that actually leads. If the Holy Spirit prompts you to do something, you don't need to bother either the exploit, uh, exploring you or not, or mm -hmm. exploiting you or not. If it is the Holy Spirit, you understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if it is not the Holy Spirit that is prompting you to do what you have to do, you understand? You have not committed anything. It is not everybody that you can't, you can you can satisfy everybody. Yes. Some people are deliberately out to exploit, you know, to exploit you. You understand? There's some people are, you know, we, we, we know of some people that look, even when you want to help them, they will be dictating the kind of what they want. In as much as this thing is a gift, and they will still be talking to you or demanding as if 
I mean, it is a right. Helping people is not a right. It's a privilege. It's, it's our duty as children of God to do. But you should not demand it. Nobody should demand it. You know, and I see you can ask for it. You can ask for help. But you must allow the Holy Spirit to prompt you, to direct you, to know the extent to which to go. You know, it's good to actually balance it. When we're talking of being kind to the poor, to the needy, it is you, we are not Jehovah Jireh. We are not the one who can provide all the needs of other people. You understand? We all have capacity and our capacities are limited. So to the extent to which our limits can reach, we are to allow the Holy Spirit to direct us to the right place. And if it is the Holy Spirit that has prompted you to do what you have done in the name of charity, you don't need to be bothered. Okay. In fact, when even if Paul, uh, Peter writes that it's even better for you as you are doing the good thing they are repaying you with evil. It's more, there's so much reward. That person cannot even pay you back. You understand? There are a lot of people out there that are there to to take advantage of us, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, we'll be able to do the right thing. But don't mm -hmm. stop doing good because somebody has you know, exploited you. Don't stop. We must not stop doing good works because somebody has taken advantage of us. It's not a reason for us to stop doing good works. That's what I will just want to add to that, you know. Do we have any other question? Do we have any other question? Yeah, I was, I, yeah, I was on that uh, Luke chapter 14. You know, this is Christ. That is why I, I've always prayed to my God anytime we are doing something either an anniversary or Christmas or New Year, any event. And by the grace of God, we've been practicing that for a long time now. And it's very, very, it's, it's, it gives us peace and joy that you don't organize your party only for those whom you know or for the elites alone. Remember the people who are homeless somewhere. Remember the poor somewhere, they must be part of that party. You know, when Christ says, when you organize a party, when you give a dinner or a supper, do not ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back. You understand? And you be repaid. Here, yeah, I mean, if we read, you have another version like uh, Amplified. You, mm -hmm. What, is, what Christ is trying to emphasize here, you know, Christ used hyperbole most of the time for, for you to know the depth of that, of that message is bringing. You know, he will give you some, um, some time so that we definitely and, and repay you. But when you give a feast, invite the poor the maimed, the lame, the blind. How many of us have obeyed the scripture? How many of us have obeyed the scripture? That is why any party, any event we are doing, we always have it at the back of our mind. And look, don't forget, do we have something for the less privileged? This is the motivating scripture in our life. Either we are doing wedding, we have to organize something for the people who are less privileged. Or either we are doing, like the time we are having our anniversary, this last anniversary, we have to organize, you know, pack, we have to pack some gifts, food to homeless people who started distributing out because we know there is, this is, there's a scripture, there's an instruction that Christ has put in place that when you organize a feast, invite those people. So we took those things to those people 
we went around the city of Houston to that area and we distribute parts of food and drink to, to as many as God gave us the grace because of this scripture. And you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. This is a great word. This word guarantees that when you get to heaven, you'll be rewarded at the resurrection. Amen. 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 Do we have any other question? As we are rounding up now, I mean, what, what, what can we say? What is our take home from this? Ma, what, what's your take home from this, Ma? What can you say this is your take home, Ma? <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes us to um, take me to know how to be more responsible in fulfilling God's promises and the conditions of getting those promises fulfilled in our lives. Mm. Yeah. We read this every time, but sometimes we do not really sit down to think about the details, the practical side of it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Yeah. That if God says, uh, we say we are giving to the poor or we are rich, uh, whatever we do, we should do it to make impact yeah. on our community or the people around us who we can help, who we can pray for, and who we can also bring forward to Christ. And then it also teaches us that as a Christian, we are not alone. Every other person around us are children of God like us. Mm -hmm. So in whatever situation we are, mm. we should be able to reach out to them, not just financially alone, but mm. in terms of love, care, and giving them whatever we can give them to help them have a more fulfilled life. Yeah. Because when people are, have a fulfilled life, they appreciate that it draws them again nearer to God. Mm -hmm. And they appreciate that, oh, if I have a God who has done this for me, then I will worship that God all the days of my life. Yeah. I'm not saying that God should bribe them, give them mm -hmm. as bribe, you know, mm -hmm. but it's part of the endearment. You are yeah. more endeared to the word of God mm -hmm. when you pray. You, uh, you ask God for things, or even when you make mistakes, as human beings, we make mistakes. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Even when we make mistakes, we believe that we have a heavenly father who mm -hmm. cares for our needs, who mm -hmm. cares for our emotions, mm -hmm. and will forgive us. And then that also gives us more excitement to want to uh, read the Bible, to find mm -hmm. that, oh, what would God say if I do this? Mm -hmm. What would God say? if I give this person this thing. Mm -hmm. So again, it endears us more to searching for the word of God yeah. and also practicing the word of God. And yeah. I believe yeah. that's why we are Christians. Sure, amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that, that one thing you said that really touched me is that we are not alone, you know? Yes. It's, and that's, that's one thing that is, I've seen in this our society, you know, call America, a lot of people live alone as if oh yes no In other America, i agree exists. with you 100 <laughs> percent no other person exists mm -hmm. me and my wife and husband alone mm -hmm. to end with others mm -hmm. and that's that's that is one one assignment one major work we ministers of god really need to talk mm -hmm. so that people people just live so independently that they don't consider other people. They don't. Uh, especially those who are in, in a very poor situation. Every mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. I've seen that in this society and it's not, it's, it's not a good, this, this is all indifference too. This is all indifference we are talking about. That is why if we don't preach this, if we don't let people know, Mere mm -hmm. indifference, independent spirit can lead so many people to hell. We make many people to miss the rapture. Why? Mm -hmm. right? Because they just feel they are all alone. They are just, they don't, they don't care. And may God help us. May mm -hmm. God help us. Thank you so much for that uh, contribution. You're, You're welcome. What's your take home? <laughs> <So sure. laughs> Those of us online, just write your take home. Let's so that we can share it, we need to we need, we need to take something home. 
you know. Mm -hmm. We are not alone. <laughs> oh. Yes, sir. Mm. So my take home, mm. I've come to realize that Jesus is more particular about what we do to others, mm -hmm. especially the blessed privilege. Yeah. So we should try as much as we can to help, mm. whether in prayers, whether mm -hmm. in need, make people feel belong, let them feel mm -hmm. like human beings. Mm -hmm. you know, there are times the way you talk to people or the way you react to people, mm -hmm. you know, just show them that you are nothing. I mean, I can't relate with you. So we have to be conscious of the way we react with people, mm -hmm. the, the way we, we take them in, the way we carry their issues, even when they come. Even if you don't have money, show love, show care, mm -hmm. show affection. Let them feel they are somebody. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is Amen. Amen. So please, I want to encourage those of us online on, on Facebook, write your two Please put it there. It's very important because we need to grab this thing. These people were sent to end just because they did it, because of what they did not do. Not because of what they have done. You understand? Because of what they did, what they failed to do, they failed to care. And may God help us. Amen. They will not be guilty at the end. Amen. May, may we, the grace to live right, live ready, and live yes. rapture with the God gave us. Amen. Yeah. In the Amen. Name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can you pray for us now? Father, mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord and our God, we thank you, Father, for these studies. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for revealing yourself to us. Mm. We thank you, Father, because it is a privilege to know more about you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray that everything we have studied today, Lord, you give us a heart that does your word. Amen. Amen. Pray, Father, Lord God Almighty, that you help us mm. to live by your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pastor said earlier, giving our life to Christ doesn't mean the same as living for Christ. Mm. Father, mm -hmm. we want to live for you. Amen. Father, Amen. Lord God Almighty, we pray that none of this word will stand Amen. against us at the end of it. Amen. Amen. Father, for answered prayers. Thank you, Jesus. For Amen. Amen. Jesus mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank we you, ask that as many that will say listen to this teaching, Lord, the same grace that we have received tonight will be imparted them in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, this teaching, Lord, will not lose its power by, I mean, over the time Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. It will not lose its power by distance. Amen. Lord, Amen. We ask as many that will, will, will wrong with this teaching, Lord, their lives will be transformed. Amen. Amen. Lord, for faith and grace, church, we pray that, it, that no one, oh Lord, we know hell. Amen. Amen. Lord, the grace to live right, to be Amen. ready, and to live rapturable. Lord Amen. Almighty, we receive it tonight. Amen. Amen. I cover every one of us in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Every of our family members in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. We soak this word in the blood of Jesus. And Satan will not take it out of our heart in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Are you too? Have a blessed. Bless his face to shine upon us. Amen. Gracious unto us. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us Amen. and give us peace. Amen. And we share the grace together in fellowship. May the, May the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the love, love of God, God and, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, Surely whose names and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we, and we shall, shall live in the Lord, the Lord forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For the Amen. Lord, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin. Lord of sin. And so sin shall, shall not have dominion over us. For the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead 
Do us in yes, and quicken our mother the glory of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you, ma'am. Bless you and you too. Bye. Thank you. We do. Thank you.